What's going on, everybody? It's Lowe's here. We back on the throne of positivity, where the first is last and the last is first. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you don't miss out on these upcoming videos. Thank you to everybody who sold seed into the ministry. I truly appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. The links are in the description if you would like to support. Again, this is not possible if you guys do not support. So thank you for contributing to the mission of God. So I have your message from God for 2024, and it's not what you think. You have to trust in the Lord for what I'm about to say. God is not getting you out of this. He's getting you through it. And I know that we have the expectation that you want me to tell you that, you know, like I've been saying that promises is going to be fulfilled. The gates of heaven are going to be open and God is going to make a way where there is no way in this and that and that and the third. And as much as I would love to tell you those things and as beautiful as they are and as true as they are, this message doesn't negate those things. I want to present the message that in fasting and in prayer, the Lord has given me. And it is simply that God is not getting you out of this. He's getting you through it. We oftentimes want to pray to God like, Lord, please take me out of this hole. Take me out of the pit. Take me out of the prison. Bring me to the palace, oh God. But the thing is, is that the Lord purposes within himself and determines with himself what he will accomplish and there's no one who can change his mind you can't ask god to not change his mind about the blessing but then you want him to change his mind about how he's gonna do it because if you think that you know what god has for you and how he's going to do it beloved i'm here to tell you you won't become the person that he envisioned for you to become there is a specific you that has to arrive at the place he has designated and that will only come to pass by the thing that you and I are so afraid to face. And that is the tears, the many nights of crying out to the Lord. It's the fasting. It's the praying. It's the seemingly unanswered prayers. It's all these things. It's the pain, the trials, the tribulation, the turmoil, the storm. It's everything. And God is will be with you that situation that you see that is impossible with god it is possible and he's by your side and he's gonna show you that he is the god of the impossible the thing is is that we have a specific mentality of how we want god to get where we want to go but the thing is is like we can't determine that he's the god of the impossible because he did the impossible as if he just snaps his fingers and it is what it is no he's the god of the impossible because he did the impossible through the impossible process through the impossible time to do the impossible so that you may arrive at the impossible you understand we don't like all the other impossibilities we just want the god of the impossible but he's going to show you who he is. I oftentimes try to give credit to God as much as possible. And I think that we, in a way, are like lowering our standards from God when we just expect him to snap fingers and make things happen in that way. The world doesn't work that way and neither does God work that way. It is an easy thing to see God in the miracle and the big and the grand and the great. But the true miracle is not the miracle that happened in that day. It was not that miracle that happened. It was all the thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions and billions of decisions and micro decisions and all the micro miracles that had to add up to create this thing that now was before you. And you see, here is the miracle. This is the God of the impossible. Because we want the God of the one who delivers from Egypt, but we don't want to go through the wilderness. We want the God of being crowned king and queen, but we don't want to be isolated for years and years on end like David was. We want the God of the impossible that we could be at the right hand of Pharaoh, but we don't want to spend 16 years in prison. God is the God of the impossible. He is God over light and darkness. He is God over peace and calamity. And God is doing a thing in you so great that even if he told you, you would not believe him. 
is simply no way that you can comprehend what God is doing in your life. That's why Jesus said, let me wash your feet and one day you will understand. You don't understand now, but one day, beloved, you shall. Because if you look forward to see all that's to be done, you won't understand. But if you stand from the place of blessing and you look over to see the wilderness that you pass through, then you will understand because you'll see how he delivered you from that situation. He spared you here and this heartache and this pain served its purpose in this way and that way. And the healing of your heart took place by the destruction of your heart. I often say this so that we can have right expectation of God in the sense that he is not going to do it the way that we think. What if light looks like darkness first? What if healing looks like sickness first? What if provision and abundance looks like scarcity first? What if you getting the house that he promised you looks like an eviction notice first? What if the job that he has for you is not the three dream jobs that you've been applying for and you are now rejected hundreds of applications? We have to align ourselves with the expectation that it will not go as expected. For his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And if we cannot answer the questions that God asked Job from the 38th chapter forward, then we cannot understand his ways. There's no way. We simply cannot understand. So the message that God has for you, again, I'm going to repeat this several times throughout the video so that we don't forget. God is going to do it for you, but he's not going to get you out of it. He's going to get you through it. What I find so fascinating is that on the way to the promised land, there was the city of Jericho. They could have went around Jericho and completely disregarded this city. But God had a plan because he saw a Rahab in that city. And if it wasn't for a Rahab, the spies would never have come home safely. If it wasn't for a Rahab, there would be no David. There would be no Messiah. There would be no salvation. But God determined within himself that there was a Rahab in that city that needed deliverance with all her family and her people that would obey God. And he decided, I'm not going to get Israel around the city. I'm going to cause these walls to fall down. There's a song that gives me so much hope that has been a pillar for me for many years. And it is, lo hará otra vez. He will do it again. And I think in English, I always listen to the Spanish song, but in English, he says, we've been walking around these walls. And by now, I thought that they would have fell. <clears throat> the reason why this message is yours is because the expectation is not what you think it is. Seven times around in silence and who knows what lap we in now. What if it is your year? But the expectation is not to have that expectation. The expectation is simply that God is going to do what he promised to do and that he will get us through this. And the most important thing that you must understand from this message is simply this. God is unchanging. When I was praying earlier for everyone and for this message, I was like, Lord, what is it specifically that you want these people to know for the coming year, oh God? What is it that you must tell them, oh Father? And instead of telling me, like, I'm going to fulfill promises, I'm going to do it, even though those are things that did come up in the conversation, he said, I want my people to know who I am. I want my people to know that I am the God of the impossible, that what I determine so shall it be and what I promise is unbreakable. My foundations are unshakable and if they will put their trust and hope in me, they will then see the God that I am, that they will finally understand that there is no other God who works on behalf of those who love him, who works on behalf of those who hope and trust in him. For they who trust in him shall not be shamed. You will not be shamed for placing your trust in the Lord. For if you cannot trust God, what then can you put your trust in? For we put not our trust in chariots. We put not our trust in sword and shield, in giant or in spear, in the lion or the bear. We put our trust in the name of the Lord. 
God wants you to know that he is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. God is faithful to what he has promised, and he's faithful to himself first. And we better be glad, because if this had to do with you or it had to do with me, beloved, these are not factors that we want to place our hope in. It's not about you and it's not about me. We always got to remember that. It's about him. And we must be grateful that we have a good, good father. And that in the place of a fish, he doesn't give us a stone. But he knows the desires of our heart and the burning of our flesh as we hope in him, waiting for what he has promised. But he loves us too much to give us things prematurely. He loves us too much to give us the blessing for it to be destroyed or for our hearts to be broken again. God is preparing things unto perfection because all that God does, he will not change it. It shall remain forever. Can you trust in the unchanging God? And so great is the immutable character of God. He who has no variation of change and no shadow is found within him. The father of lights. He told me this word. And he said, tell my children this. I gave them a promise and there's nothing nor no one who can stop it. Nothing will detain my word once it releases from my lips. He said, if my children, as I spoke to the prophet Jeremiah, can break my covenant that I made with the sun that it will not rise and the moon that it will not shine and give forth its light, if my children can measure the heavens and they can discover and seek out all that I have placed in the foundation of the earth, then I will break my covenant with them. Listen, beloved, I want you to truly understand this. This is not just poetic language. You must understand the uncompromising nature of God's word and how committed he is. Committed unto death and death on the cross and resurrection from the grave. That's how committed he is to his word. So committed is he to his word that he's telling you if. If is a condition that if satisfied, the rest shall follow. So if you believe that God is not faithful to his word, that he who promises not faithful, then he challenges you to measure the heavens and the foundation of the earth. He challenges you to destroy the covenant that he made to the sun and the moon. And if you can do that, then he will break his promise to you. Now, I was thinking about this with the Lord and I'm like, Father, how can it be? Why are you challenging us this way? And he said, if, if a man walking the face of this earth can truly destroy the sun and the moon and he can measure the heavens and the foundation, foundation of the earth don't you think that I an infallible God perfect in all of my ways if a man who is broken and bruised and battered and at the at a simple word given to him he will be in shambles and utter destruction to the dust of the earth if that man if this man or that man can do that then can't God do the simple thing that he has promised you Beloved, it's time to believe in the Lord. It's time to trust in God. I want you to understand who is the Lord your God. And are there greater words than what Job says in the 12th chapter? Verse 13, he says, With God are wisdom and might. He has counsel and understanding. If he tears down, none can rebuild. If he shuts a man in, no one can open. If he withholds the waters, they dry up. If he sends them out, they overwhelm the land. With him are strength and sound wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. He pours contempt on princes and looses the belt of the strong. He uncovers the deeps of the darkness and brings deep darkness to light. He makes nations great and destroys them. He enlarges nation and leads them away. The most important thing that I want you to take away from that is the last verse. 23, chapter 12 of Job. He makes nations great and he destroys them. Don't just take these to be simply words as if to negate the true depth and power of God. 
the Lord makes great nations. There's not a single man or woman walking the face of the earth that has the power to make a nation or destroy a nation. There are many men and women in this world who think they possess that power, but they are simply the collective of a conglomerate. They cannot make those decisions on their own. Only God can make a nation. Now, when I was thinking about this, I was considering, Lord, if he can enlarge nations and make them, what is this thing that you are trusting God for? What is it in comparison? So when God speaks to us, we must trust him in him because there's no other way that we would understand. For listen to how Elihu in the 33rd chapter of Job responds to Job on behalf of God. It says, for God speaks in one way and in two, though man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men, while they slumber on their beds, then he opens the ears of men. God speaks to us, but he even has to use dreams in order to reveal the fulfillment of his promises. Why? Because dreams reveal things that are not explicable in this world. They are concepts that bridge the gap between the divine and the physical plane of which we find ourselves. God is going to speak to you through dreams, through visions, whatever it may be, so that he will confirm his word to you. So as we go into 2024, I want you to hold on to the promises of God, understanding who is he truly, and place your faith in him. Remember that I told you guys that the verse for 2024 is the power of agreement. Matthew chapter 18, 19 through 20, where it says, if two of you would agree on anything, it shall be done for you on earth as it is in heaven. And where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Why is that important? When you receive a promise, everybody abandons you. God does this to show us that we can only trust in him and no one else. And when we finally trust in him, then we can trust in whoever we need to according to his counsel. What is so beautiful about this verse is that when everybody else abandons you, all of a sudden your family don't believe you for the verse. Your friends don't have any advice for you. Your enemies rise up like nothing ever before. And you know what's so interesting about this? Again, your family abandons you. They don't know what to tell you. They don't even believe you. Your friends are just there like question mark and they may rise up against you. And then your enemies are just what? They always your enemies. You always have one who sticks closer than a brother. The Holy Spirit is within you and he is always in agreement with the Lord. The Bible says, who knows the mind of a man except for the spirit? And it is the spirit of God that knows the mind of God. And it is Jesus who intercedes for us on our behalf before the throne of grace. And by the spirit of the Lord, we can enter his throne room with boldness and confidence. So what does that tell you? You don't even need another person on this world to come into agreement with you because God is already in agreement with himself through his son and his spirit. The son intercedes in the throne room and the spirit is within us and the temple of God. And when we know not what we ought to pray, the spirit intercedes with utterances unutterable. So will you come into agreement with the spirit of the Lord that he may do what he has promised? Because two or three are always gathered. God is always in agreement with his own name. He's always gathered in his name. The question is, will we come into agreement with him? That's the beauty of God is that he guarantees it. The spirit of the Lord is a seal over his promises. Will we be willing to relinquish all control to him? Will we let everything go in his hands so that he may build our house? Will we be wise in that way? Can we trust God with completely relinquishing everything and coming into agreement with him? Because he who promises faithful, he won't withhold any good thing from his children. So come into agreement with the spirit of the Lord. And how much more beautiful will it be if we can find ourselves in agreement 
you with me and me with you. And we pray one with the other and one over the other. And even if we don't speak, even if we don't know each other, we can still come into agreement because the common denominator is God. And he will get us through this time, this trial and this tribulation. So again, I tell you, the message that God has for you, he won't get you out of it. He's going to get you through it. He's the God of the impossible, and he will not change his mind about you. And you can trust in his promises, for he won't break it. And then we are coming into agreement for 2024, and I do believe in the fulfilled promises of God. I believe that like Elihu spoke, that in one way God will speak, and in another he'll speak. And through dreams and visions that he will give us, he will finally fulfill our promise. So I ask you, come into agreement that God will speak to us in that way. And then if you will come in agreement, I want to invite you January 1st to January 21st, 21 days of fasting. We are going to do the Daniel fast together. You could choose any number of days. The point is, will you fast and seek the Lord truthfully and with your whole heart? I'm going to do the full 21 days because I'm going to lead this procession we're gonna lead this army we are gonna lead and we are gonna take the kingdom of god by force with violence against the kingdom of darkness we will take back what the devil stole god will restore double what the enemy has taken from us like that song in spanish como arrebato mi familia las promesas de dios mi salud todo lo que dios tiene para mí es mío y nada ni nadie lo detendrá porque sus promesas son fiel take back that's what that song is take back the promises your family everything because his promises are true nothing can stop it so i'll leave you guys with that y'all know what it is it's los here we on the throne of positivity where nobody shall dethrone us. We out. Have faith and believe in the Lord. We going into this new year with nothing stopping the Lord.